Welcome back to another episode of Wicked Mysterious. I'm your host, Danny, and today is Mini Mystery Monday. We don't have Katie with us again this week. If you missed last week's episode, we did announce that she won't be with us for a little while, but she did say thank you to everyone who reached out with well wishes. No real housekeeping today other than the usual to like and subscribe, please. And if you could leave us a rating and review on Spotify or Apple, that would be really helpful. Also, I think I might eliminate the separation of the mini and full episodes since they're going to be much shorter now without any conversation. And that's really it. So let's get right to the mystery. In the Sonoran Desert of California, northwest of Yuma, Arizona, and just north of the Mexican border, lies a tiny town shrouded in mystery. That is, if you consider a place with a population of two a town. This is the very strange mystery of Felicity, California, located in the absolute middle of nowhere. Let's get into it. In the 1950s, Jacques-André Istel, a French diplomat and investment banker, moved to the United States. He worked on Wall Street and was also a Marine in the Korean War. Eventually becoming an avid parachuter, he created a team of parachuters that won the World Championship of Parachuting in 1956. I had no idea there was such a thing. He went on to train in the U.S. Army in freefall parachuting. Then in the 80s, Istel sold off his parachuting business, and with that money, he purchased 2,600 acres of desert in 1986. This land is located in Imperial County, California, and is named Felicity in dedication and remembrance to his wife, Felicia. Istel is the mayor of Felicity, having unanimously won an election he held himself, in which he and his wife were the only voters. In 1984, a year before buying what would become Felicity, Estelle wrote a children's book called Ko, the Good Dragon at the Center of the World. Some people think that this is a creepy book and will find it rife with conspiracy. The story is centered around a star-spangled dragon named Ko who lives underground with his family. He is red, white, and blue with stars, just like the flag, for some reason that we never find out. In the story, Ko's mother explains that his name is a prophecy. C-O-E stands for Center of the World. Now, obviously, that doesn't align with the acronym, but it's possible that the author meant Center of the Earth. His quest is to emerge from underground at the location at the center of the world. The description of the center of the world is that it is a hot place, the desert, and it is named for happiness. The name Felicity actually means happiness. The author references himself by his initials J-A-I, and Ko crowns him as the only person who is able to speak to dragons. He asks Jay to bring him all of humanity's questions. He says that he needs privacy for 100 years and only Jay can enter his secret lair. He tells him that he flies at night and in secret, and that his scales reflect radar. Ko tells Jay to build him a monument at the exact center of the earth, which he states can be found by researching the stars which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because he already knew where the center of the earth was since that's where the prophecy said he'd emerge from. But Jake complies with his demand by building a pyramid. The end of the book is probably the most bizarre part. It says, quote, I send a kiss, be sure to let it cool, to each boy and each girl on earth. And dear children of all ages, as you go to sleep at night, you can feel on your cheek the warm and gentle kiss of Ko, the good dragon at the center of the world. The end. This story is dedicated to children of all ages. Hmm. Okay. The last page says that Jay, the author, is the human ambassador to dragons. Conspiracy theorists have a field day with this story. There's a video by YouTuber Enter the Stars who breaks down every aspect of this book. He points to numerology and the number of spikes on the dragon's tail, to the smoke puffs shaped like 666, to even the octagon-shaped glasses Ko's father wears. The monument referred to in the book that was built in Ko's honor is actually a real pyramid in Felicity. It is made of glass and stone and stands 21 feet tall. Inside, just under the apex of the pyramid, there is a small metallic stamp marking the official center of the world and laid in the floor. Visitors can pay $3 to see this made-up center point. You may be wondering just how Estelle was able to claim this spot as the official center of the world, considering there is no center point on the outside of a sphere. 
He actually joined the Board of Supervisors in his county so that he could designate the spot of his choosing as the exact center of the world. Why? We have no idea. So, so far, we have a weirdly famous parachuter who wrote a weird book about a creepy dragon who loves children and then built a pyramid in a town that only he and his wife live in. But a deeper look makes Felicity a truly creepy place, bursting with occult symbolism. Let's look more into who Jacques André Estelle was. He comes from a line of elite family members. His father, André, was a highly influential diplomat and investment banker. His brother, Yves André Estelle, used to be vice chairman of Rothschild, Inc. Now he's a senior advisor to the Rothschild Global Financial Advisory. As a member of the Council of Foreign Relations, he rubs shoulders with many of the global elite. The Rothschild family is one of the wealthiest families in the world. They're responsible for creating a banking dynasty that started back in the 1700s. This dynasty made them one of the most powerful families of all time. Many conspiracy theorists believe that the Rothschilds are shape-shifting reptilians, while skeptics claim that this is anti-Semitic rhetoric. Many fact-checking websites will go as far as saying that the Rothschilds do not control central banks and are not even on the list of wealthiest families. Still, theories prevail that the Rothschilds are part of the Illuminati, the Freemasons, or some other secret society. So the link back to Jacques André Estelle and Felicity is its strange Masonic symbolism and its potential link to the global elite. The structures in the town of Felicity have a very strange layout. There is a chapel built up on a hill, and it sits directly across from the pyramid. In between these two structures, there's a large shape made out of 62 granite walls. And notably, this layout is very similar to the layout of the Vatican, as well as Washington, D.C. Felicity has a strange maze, which from above looks like it's in the shape of 666. The maze is more of a labyrinth, though it's not in the usual shape as seen with most others of its kind. Labyrinths are not actually mazes you need to find your way out of while being taunted by David Bowie in tights. In fact, they usually have one path in and out. They started in ancient Greek mythology where a minotaur was held in the center. Modern day labyrinths are used to represent a meandering walk through one's own subconscious, eventually getting to the center, which sort of parallels some other symbolism and felicity regarding a spiritual awakening. There's also a fenced-off spiral staircase which originally came from the Eiffel Tower. The staircase leads to nowhere, stopping at the top of the third spiral. Many see this as another link to the Freemasons, though the staircase pictured on the Masonic patch has a specific number of steps at each turn, and this is something it does not share with the stairs located at Felicity. The Masonic staircase has three steps, then five after the first turn, and then seven steps to the top. These stairs are supposed to represent youth, manhood, and old age. The slabs of granite that give the landscape its geometric shape are 100 feet long, 477 pounds each, and about 5 feet high. Built to be a wall of remembrance, some of the engravings include important moments in the history of French aviation, the history of California, as well as the history of Arizona. These slabs were installed by a group of engineers and are expected to last 4,000 years. He calls this his Museum of History in Granite. One of the slabs of granite has Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam etched into it. As the TheVilligentCitizen.com points out, this famous painting portrays God floating inside what looks like a human brain, and his hand points to Adam. This symbolically represents a spiritual awakening and the idea that you yourself are God. This is also written in the Bible as well, where it says, the kingdom of God is within you. This is important when understanding the layout of Felicity. In the center of the town, there's a sundial made of a replica of God's hand from the creation of Adam painting. The finger is pointing from the direction of the chapel on the hill and is pointing toward the pyramid. Again, according to the TheVigilantCitizen.com, this is a representation of the Freemason belief that true spiritual enlightenment is not found within religion, but only through knowing oneself. The chapel in Felicity represents religion, whereas the pyramid represents integration of you with your higher self. Inside the chapel, though, on the altar are two chairs made of leather and wood. These chairs are stained with what some people think is blood. 
so it's unclear why Istal would build a chapel if he is, in fact, against religion. He said in articles that he has no idea why he even built the chapel. He said, quote, I'm a traditionalist, and I believe in protocol and courtesy. If you build a house for a higher power, for God, it should be on the highest thing, end quote. Despite all the blood, potential occult symbolism, and general bizarreness of its founder, Felicity seems like it might be a cool place to visit. Thank you for listening to Wicked Mysterious, and we will see you again next week.